What's up everybody? So today is a very fun day. I finally get to check out a manual Scion FRS. Now when this car first came out, I had just bought the Genesis Coupe and I was actually able to go to a press launch event where they took the FRSs around the country doing autocross courses and I was able to go to the first event that they held. So pretty cool, I was actually one of the first people to take one of these around an autocross course. Now one thing very cool, this car is exactly half the price of what I paid for the Nismo 370Z. And huge thank you to Champion Car Company for providing the FRS for today's video. Once again, they got another awesome car in their inventory. So let's check out if a used FRS is an awesome budget sports car. So by now we already know the FRS, two liter, four cylinder, naturally aspirated boxer engine. This car's built right alongside its twin, the Subaru BRZ. And we already know the basic specs, 200 horsepower and about 150 pound feet of torque. So over the years, we've seen this car for many years, there's been tons of reviews of it. And what I found, it's either one side or the other. There are the haters who've reviewed it, who all they talk about is the acceleration or lack thereof and they talk about how it's a bad car just because it's very slow. And then there are the fanboys who review it who rave on it calling it the best car ever made and they don't even mention acceleration at all. So this is gonna be just an unbiased, open-minded review talking about this car on the used market. And actually, I'm gonna start off with the acceleration. So if you're an owner of the car, you might wanna mute your audio for a little bit. But let's take a turn. So third gear, let's accelerate. And there is 60. Okay, so to say underwhelming, that would be an understatement. There really is no acceleration. It didn't push you in your seat at all. Obviously my 370 is a totally different car, but in that car, I mean, and in many other cars, even at this price range, you mash the gas in third gear and it gets up to 60 pretty quickly going, you know, from 20 or 30 miles an hour. So yeah, acceleration is not the strong suit of this car, but we'll touch back on that. Let's talk about what this car is. This car is built for handling. That's what this is about. It's a lightweight rear wheel drive sports car weighing in around 2,700 pounds. You don't really see that on many cars aside from a Miata, which is, I believe, a little bit lighter. But this car, under 3,000 by a lot, weighs much less than a Genesis Coupe or a 370Z. And it has a very low center of gravity. With the Boxer engine, it sits barely higher than the front wheels. It's really, really low. And when you pop the hood and actually look under the hood, you can obviously see how low the engine is. So now as we approach a pretty fast sweeping turn, just kind of steering into it, following the road, there's a little bit of weight transfer that I can feel going from left to right. And as we take another turn, I mean, the car is really flat. Those were wide turns, so we'll get to some tighter ones in a little bit. But already the steering feels really, really sharp. There's really no play in it at all. Just going in a straight line, giving it a little bit, and we're actually all over the road doing that. So the steering is pretty precise. The steering wheel is very nice to hold. There's no buttons on it. It's nice perforated leather on the side, so really easy to grip. And it's actually the smallest steering wheel that Toyota fitted to a car when this car came out. So really nice to use. The shifter, the clutch pedal only moves like four inches. It's a very short throw. And the shifter itself, same thing. It's a really short throw shifter, very notchy. It's easily to get the exact gear you wanna go into. And as we're a little boggy in sixth gear, just rev match into fifth and a fourth. Easy to rev match, really, really good around the turns. And actually accelerating out of that turn, it honestly it didn't feel slow. I didn't match the gas or anything like that, but it, it moved briskly around the turn. All right, coming up to a stop sign, we'll make a right and try acceleration one last time. All right, so now from first gear, kind of accelerating. Sixty. So it's, yeah, it doesn't really push you in your seat at all. And now this is actually a really good opportunity to continue talking about acceleration because I am stuck behind a moped going 20 in a 45. Second gear. I mean, it's not that it's so slow that it just doesn't get out of its own way. It, it got past the little moped safely and easily. It gets up to speed, it's just it doesn't have that acceleration that'll put you in your seat at all. So that definitely is a downside of the car. So taking a turn, 
So a pretty sharp turn, it's really flat. There's really no body roll. I'd say like an inch of movement. So that's pretty good for a car like this. It definitely takes the turns really nicely. Approaching another turn, just going around it. It's really, really precise, and the hood lines kind of help with that too. You can actually see exactly where each wheel is. Looking at the left side, there's a little wheel arch, and if you look to the right of the hood, there's actually another arch where the wheel is. So it's really easy to know exactly where the car is, and it seems pretty easy to point it in the right direction. And as far as suspension goes for the car, I find it very comfortable. It absorbs the bumps really nicely. It seems pretty smooth over everything. Other reviews might say a different thing about that, but comparing my Nismo, it's a very abrupt ride, very stiff suspension, and a little bit more direct, but this car is softer than that, and it's pretty comfortable. I'm on a very bad road. Would be much worse in my car, but this one kind of takes the bumps like normal. Uh, there's a little bit of road noise. You can hear, I think, a little bit of wind noise too, and you can definitely hear some road noise and stuff like that. So it's not necessarily the quietest car out there, but I wouldn't consider it a loud car at all. A little bit quieter than the 370Z, but not quite as quiet as something like a Genesis Coupe. And just on a straight road now, just kind of cruising with the bumps. Pretty comfortable, and the seating position also is pretty nice. I was always pretty impressed with the bucket seats the car came with. It has really nice bolstering on each side of it. Really good in your back, too. It has nice shoulder ones up here, so you do feel like you're sitting in the seat. And a lot of cars, when they make their budget sports car or something along those lines, sometimes they skimp out on the seats and just give it something that isn't the best seat. And ever since I bought the Nismo with the Recaro seats, I've taken kind of a whole new direction on how important a driver's seat is in the vehicle. Because if you think about it, every single time you use your car, you're using the driver's seat. It's something very important. And to have a good seat that holds you in it, you feel like you're in the car, you can focus on driving and focus on the fun factor of what this car can achieve. That really just helps make a car much more fun to drive. And as far as comfort goes, the base goes up my leg quite a lot. So I feel pretty comfortable in it. I could go for a pretty long cruise. I can recline it a little bit more in my head. You know, if I'm kind of tired just cruising on the highway, I can sit back pretty nicely. So I definitely like the driver position of it. The visibility is also really, really good. The little windows up in front of the mirrors also help with eliminating blind spots. And looking over your left and right shoulders, there's very minimal blind spots. So it's a pretty easy car to drive and really nice to see out of. And being that this car is going to be someone's daily driver, you're going to go to work, going to school, stuff like that. But then you can also have some fun on the back roads or take it to the track. So it's pretty practical in a normal car standpoint. The rear seats are laughably small. I thought my Genesis Coupe seats were bad, but the footroom is what sucks in these ones. When I sat in the back of these ones with my feet in the normal spot that they would be in, putting the front seat back to where it should be it just smushed my feet. So there's really no footroom back there. It's better to probably sit across the seats, which probably isn't recommended. So rear seats, yeah, they're not that good, but for storage wise, they're excellent. They fold down flat so you can fit a snowboard or golf clubs or whatever you'd like in the trunk and pass through into the driver compartment. And as far as the interior for the car, I think it's pretty nice looking. I really like how the dash has the same design as the front grille, just gives it a really cool look. The material they use on the seats is pretty nice. It's more of a micro suede cloth material, so I'm glad they didn't just go with a cheap cloth like some other cars would go with. It's a very basic car on the inside, but I do like it. It's very sporty feeling, and it's just that minimalistic approach, and I think it does give it a really good look. The outside is definitely one of my favorite things. It's just a really good looking car. The FRS's bumper is super sharp looking and has nice little fangs on each side. Really good look to it. The profile is exactly what a two door coupe would look like. It just has a great proportion all around. And with that low mounted boxer engine, the hood can be very low and it just really helps give this car a really muscular appearance. The rear end finishes nicely. The only thing I would change, it definitely needs an exhaust system to sound a lot better and to have nicer looking exhaust tips to fit in that diffuser. So when I made the video of awesome sports cars for $15,000, this one was my top pick. I thought it was kind of the nicest one to pick at that price range. This one obviously a little bit more expensive. There's a lot in different price ranges. So for $17,500 now, at this price range, you can get into a little bit nicer of other types of cars. I still think though my top three at this price are the FRS, the Genesis Coupe, and a 370Z. I know you can get like older BMWs or something like that for that same price range, but something that is also very appealing at this price range for these three cars that I just talked about is the fact that they're very new cars. This is only a few years old with 40,000 miles. The reliability is not going to be an issue. Same with a Z or a Genesis Coupe. So at the price range, that then begs the question, is this the best one for 17.5 or is there something else? My honest opinion, I am torn between the three cars that I mentioned, FRS, Z, and Genesis Coupe. I think if you go with the FRS, what you're getting is a car that handles very nicely. It handles better than the other two cars. When you take a turn, the steering is super direct. It just 
it's really planted and it's a tossable car. You can throw it around the turns, you can throw it around the mountains, the track, the autocross course. You can just have fun with the handling characteristics of it. It's also very practical, like I said, back seats in a trunk. Can't go wrong with that kind of space. It's very nice to have. It's an easy to drive car. The manual is super easy. Maybe this is gonna be your first manual transmission vehicle very easy to learn on it's pretty forgiving so it'll be a good system to learn the only sacrifice is acceleration obviously this car is not built to win any drag races but it is fun to drop a few gears floor it and accelerate we're not moving <laughs> that was like 10 seconds to go five miles an hour it, it doesn't accelerate and for me that is something fun to do but if you really just want the car that is nimble and tossable in the turns and just fun to drive and just takes the turns very nicely, then this is the car that you're gonna wanna pick. Now, if you want some more power, you have other great options. A 370Z is the one that I would actually buy at this price range, a little biased on that, obviously, but I like the 370Z because it is very powerful. It has tons of power to get up to speed. Whatever gear you're in, if you're around 4,000 RPM, it'll put you back in your seat, and it is a lot of fun. Handling is very, very good. Not quite as sharp as this car, just because it weighs more, but that car does a really good job not actually showing its weight. It doesn't feel like a car that's 33 or 3,400 pounds. It's very nimble, tossable, and a lot of fun to drive. The sacrifice is practicality. The trunk is pretty small, and the back seats are, well, there are none. It's a little tiny shelf on each side. So practicality, you're gonna sacrifice. The other option is the Genesis Coupe. You have two engines, the two liter turbo or the 3.8 V6. The V6 is very powerful right out of the gate. It's not quite as fast as a 370Z, but you're definitely not gonna be a slow car. The two liter has a lot of potential. You throw a tune on that and it'll probably be faster than all the other cars in a straight line. Tons of modification potential being a turbocharged car. It is very smooth on the highway when cruising. Comparing it to these two cars, it's a luxury vehicle. The sacrifice with that car, it doesn't handle nearly as well as this FRS and doesn't handle as well as the 370 either. It handles very nicely, but it definitely shows its weight. So to finish up with the FRS, taking some more turns, accelerating a little bit. That was from 55 to 62. That's kind of underwhelming. So yes, acceleration is pretty low, but it's fun once you're going. I mean, I'm going 55 on this back road and it's, it's fun to drive. It handles so well going at least this kind of speed. Taking the turns is so direct. The suspension seems really good. The steering is my favorite thing. It's so sharp. Like doing that just is really sharp. The brakes do a pretty good job. The car doesn't weigh that much, so it doesn't need big old Brembo brakes or anything crazy like that. But overall, it's a fun to drive, nimble car. It's practical, pretty good on gas, although I think my car gets about the same gas mileage, so it's not really too much to say. But I think at this price range, if you want just a fun to drive, practical little toy that you can daily drive, you can take to the autocross, you can take to the mountains or wherever, this is definitely in the running for the top three. It's a great pick. So I think that sums up the video. Finally checking out a manual Scion FRS. This has been, for some reason, I've always liked it. I always thought it was really cool. When it first came out, I was really excited about maybe even buying one because from what I heard, it was gonna be a under $20,000 sports car from Toyota. I was looking forward to that going from a Scion TC. It would have been awesome to go with one of these. When it came out, it was 27 grand, way over my budget. and. I was glad I didn't buy one because the Genesis Coupe was a lot cheaper. And honestly, the acceleration in my Genesis was way better than this, so I was very happy with sticking with that car. But now on the used market, 15 to 18 grand, there are plenty of these things out there. This particular one I would buy if I was actually looking for an extra car at this point, I would buy one of these and I would buy this one just because condition is beautiful. It's a one owner car. It's got low mileage. It's exactly what I would look for if I was buying an FRS. Not quite in the position to get an extra toy car, but I would definitely go with an FRS. So that about sums up the video. Huge thank you once again to Champion Car Company for allowing me to check out the FRS for the day. Finally, checking that off the list, checking out a manual FRS, definitely a pretty cool car. Be sure to give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button down below to stay tuned for plenty more videos to come and comment below for $17,500 what affordable sports car would you buy? So thank y'all for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you all next video.